insignificant her means, infinite her work, on a great field of shapeless consciousness in little finite strokes of mind and sense an endless truth she endlessly unfolds, a timeless mystery works out in time. The greatness she has dreamed her acts have missed, her labor is a passion and a pain, a rapture and pang, her glory and her curse, and yet she cannot choose but labors on, her mighty heart forbids her to desist. As long as the world lasts her failure lives astonishing and foiling reasons gaze, a folly and a beauty unspeakable, a superb madness of the will to live, a daring, a delirium of delight. This is her being's law, its sole resource, she sates, though satisfaction never comes, her hungry will to lavish everywhere her many imaged fictions of the self and thousand fashions of one reality. A world she made touched by truth's fleeing hem, a world cast into a dream of what it seeks, an icon of truth, a conscious mystery's shape. It lingered not like the earth mind hemmed in in solid barriers of apparent fact, it dared to trust the dream mind and the sole daughter hunter of spiritual verities still only thought or guessed or held by faith, it seized in imagination and confined a painted bird of paradise in a cage. This greater life is enamored of the unseen, it calls to some highest light beyond its reach, it can feel the silence that absolves the soul, it feels a saviour touch, a ray divine, beauty and good and truth its godheads are. It is near to heavenlier heavens than earth's eyes see, a direr darkness than man's life can bear, it has kinship with the demon and the god. A strange enthusiasm has moved its heart, it hungers for heights, it passions for the supreme. It hunts for the perfect word, the perfect shape, it leaps to the summit thought, the summit light. For by the form the formless is brought close and all perfection fringes the absolute. A child of heaven who never saw his home, its impetus meets the eternal at a point, it can only near and touch, it cannot hold, it can only strain towards some bright extreme, its greatness is to seek and to create. On every plane, this greatness must create. On earth, in heaven, in hell she is the same, of every fate she takes her mighty part. A guardian of the fire that lights the suns, she triumphs in her glory and her might, opposed, oppressed she bears God's urge to be born, the spirit survives upon non-being's ground, world force outlasts world disillusion's shock, dumb, she is still when most unseen, most mightily she works, housed in the atom, buried in the clod, her quick creative passion cannot cease. In conscience is her long gigantic pause, her cosmic swoon is a stupendous phase, Time-born, she hides her immortality, in death, her bed, she waits the hour to rise. Even with the light denied that sent her forth and the hope dead she needed for her task, even when her brightest stars are quenched in night, nourished by hardship and calamity and with pain for her body's handmaid, masseurs, nurse, her tortured invisible spirit continues still to toil though in darkness, to create though with pangs, she carries crucified God upon her breast. In chill insentient depths where joy is none, immured, oppressed by the resisting void where nothing moves and nothing can become, still she remembers, still invokes the skill the wonderworker gave her at her birth, imparts to drowsy formlessness a shape, reveals a world where nothing was before. In realms confined to a prone circle of death, to a dark eternity of ignorance, a quiver in an inert inconscient mass, or imprisoned in immobilized worlds of force, by matter's blind compulsion deaf and mute she refuses motionless in the dust to sleep. Then, for her rebel waking's punishment given only hard mechanic circumstance as the enginery of her magic craft, she fashions godlike marvels out of mud, in the plasm she sets her dumb immortal urge, helps the live tissue to think, the closed sense to feel, flashes through the frail nerve's poignant messages, in a heart of flesh though brute bodies gives a soul, a will, a voice. Ever she summons as by a sorcerer's wand beings and shapes and scenes innumerable, torchbearers of her pomps through time and space. This world is her long journey through the night, the suns and planets lamps to light her road, our reason is the confidant of her thoughts, our senses are her vibrant witnesses. They're drawing her signs from things half true, half false, she labors to replace by realized dreams the memory of her lost eternity. These are her deeds in this huge world ignorance, till the veil is lifted, till the night is dead, 
In light or dark she keeps her tireless search, time is her road of endless pilgrimage. One mighty passion motives all her works. Her eternal lover is her action's cause, for him she leaped forth from the unseen vasts to move here in a stark unconscious world. Its acts are her commerce with her hidden guest, his moods she takes for her heart's passionate moulds, in beauty she treasures the sunlight of his smile. Ashamed of her rich cosmic poverty, she cajoles with her small gifts his mightiness, holds with her scenes his looks fidelity and woos his large-eyed wandering thoughts to dwell in figures of her million-impulsed force. Only to attract her veiled companion and keep him close to her breast in her world cloak lest from her arms he turn to his formless peace, is her heart's business and her clinging care. Yet when he is most near, she feels him far. For contradiction is her nature's law dot and keep him as her cherished prisoner that never they may part again in time. A sumptuous chamber of the spirit's sleep at first she made, a deep interior room, where he slumbers as if a forgotten guest. But now she turns to break the oblivious spell, awakes the sleeper on the sculptured couch, she finds again the presence in the form and in the light that wakes with him recovers a meaning in the hurry and trudge of time, and through this mind that once obscured the soul passes a glint of unseen deity. Across a luminous dream of spirit space she builds creation like a rainbow bridge between the original silence and the void. A net is made of the mobile universe, she weaves a snare for the conscious infinite. A knowledge is with her that conceals its steps and seems a mute omnipotent ignorance. A might is with her that makes wonders true, the incredible is her stuff of common fact. Her purposes, her workings riddles prove, examined, they grow other than they were, explained, they seem yet more inexplicable. Even in our world a mystery has reigned earth's cunning screen of trivial plainness hides, her larger levels are of sorceries made. There the enigma shows its splendid prism, there is no deep disguise of commonness, occult, Profound comes all experience, marvel is ever new, miracle divine. There is a screened burden, a mysterious touch, there is a secrecy of hidden sense. Although no earthen mask weighs on her face, into herself she flees from her own sight. All forms are tokens of some veiled idea whose covert purpose lurks from mind's pursuit, yet is a womb of sovereign consequence. There every thought and feeling is an act, and every act a symbol and a sign, and every symbol hides a living power. A universe she builds from truths and myths, but what she needed most she cannot build, all shown is a figure or copy of the truth, but the real veils from her its mystic face. All else she finds, there lacks eternity, all is sought out, but missed the infinite dot a consciousness lit by a truth above was felt, it saw the light but not the truth, it caught the idea and built from it a world, it made an image there and called it God. Yet something true and inward harbored there. The beings of that world of greater life, tenants of a larger air and freer space, live not by the body or in outward things, a deeper living was their seat of self. In that intense domain of intimacy objects dwell as companions of the soul, the body's actions are a minor script, the surface rendering of a life within. All forces are life's retinue in that world and thought and body as her handmaids move. The universal widenesses give her room, all feel the cosmic movement in their acts and are the instruments of her cosmic might. Or their own self they make their universe. In all who have risen to a greater life, a voice of unborn things whispers to the ear, to their eyes visited by some high sunlight aspiration shows the image of a crown, to work out a seed that she has thrown within, to achieve her power in them her creatures live. Each is a greatness growing towards the heights or from his inner center oceans out, encircling ripples of concentric power they swallow, glutted, their environment. Even of that largeness many a cabin make, in narrower breadths and briefer vistas pent they live content with some small greatness one. To rule the little empire of themselves, to be a figure in their private world and make the Melia's joys and griefs their own and satisfy their life motives and life wants is charge enough an office for this strength, a steward of the person and his fate. This was transition line and starting point, a first immigration into heavenliness, for all who cross into that brilliant sphere, these are the kinsmen of our earthly race, 
this region borders on our mortal state. This wider world our greater movements gives, its strong formations build our growing selves, its creatures are our brighter replicas, complete the types we only initiate and are securely what we strive to be. As if thought out eternal characters, entire, not pulled as we by contrary tides, they follow the unseen leader in the heart, their lives obey the inner nature's law. There is kept grandeur's store, the hero's mold, the soul is the watchful builder of its fate, none is a spirit indifferent and inert, they choose their side, they see the god they adore. A battle is joined between the true and false, a pilgrimage sets out to the divine light. For even ignorance there aspires to know and shines with the luster of a distant star, there is a knowledge in the heart of sleep and nature comes to them as a conscious force. An ideal is their leader and their king, aspiring to the monarchy of the sun they call in truth for their high government, hold her incarnate in their daily acts and fill their thoughts with her inspired voice and shape their lives into her breathing form, till in her sun gold godhead they too share. Or to the truth of darkness they subscribe, whether for heaven or hell they must wage war, warriors of good, they serve a shining cause or are evil soldiers in the pay of sin. For evil and good an equal tenue keep wherever knowledge is ignorance's twin. All powers of life towards their godhead tend in the wideness and the daring of that air, each builds its temple and expands its cult, and sin too there is a divinity. Affirming the beauty and splendor of her law she claims life as her natural domain, assumes the world's throne or dons the papal robe, her worshippers proclaim her sacred right. A red tiarid fossid they revere, worship the shadow of a crooked god, admit the black idea that twists the brain or lie with the harlot power that slays the soul. A mastering virtue statuesques the pose, or a titan passion goads to a proud unrest, at wisdom's altar they are kings and priests or their life a sacrifice to an idol of power. Or beauty shines on them like a wandering star, too far to reach, passionate they follow her light, in art and life they catch the all-beautiful's ray and make the world their radiant treasure house, even common figures are with marvel robed, a charm and greatness locked in every hour awakes the joy which sleeps in all things made. A mighty victory or a mighty fall, a throne in heaven or a pit in hell, the dual energy they have justified and marked their souls with her tremendous seal, whatever fate may do to them they have earned, something they have done, something they have been, they live. Their matter is soul's result and not its cause. In a contrary balance to earth's truth of things the gross weighs less, the subtle counts for more. On inner values hangs the outer plan. As quivers with the thought the expressive word, as yearns the act with the passion of the soul this world's apparent sensible design looks vibrant back to some interior might. A mind not limited by external sense gave figures to the spirit's imponderables, the world's impacts without channels registered and turned into the body's concrete thrill the vivid workings of a bodiless force, powers here subliminal that act unseen or in ambush crouch waiting behind the wall came out in front uncovering their face. The occult grew their overt, the obvious kept a covert turn and shouldered the unknown, the unseen was felt and jostled visible shapes. In the communion of two meeting minds thought looked at thought and had no need of speech, Emotion clasped emotion in two hearts, they felt each other's thrill in the flesh and nerves all melted each in each and grew immense as when two houses burn and fire joins fire, hate grappled hate and love broke in on love, left quivering the subtle body's frame, their anger rushed galloping in brute attack, a charge of trampling hooves on shaken soil, one felt another's grief invade the breast, another's joy exulting ran through the blood, Hearts could draw close through distance, voices near that spoke upon the shore of alien seas. There beat a throb of living interchange, being felt being even when afar and consciousness replied to consciousness. And yet the ultimate oneness was not there. There was a separateness of soul from soul, an inner wall of silence could be built, an armor of conscious might protect and shield, the being could be closed in and solitary, one could remain apart in self, alone. Identity was not yet nor union's peace. All was imperfect still, half known, half done, the miracle of inconscience overpassed, the miracle of the superconscience still, unknown, self-wrapped, and felt, 
unknowable, look down on them, origin of all they were. As forms they came of the formless infinite, as names lived of a nameless eternity. The beginning and the end were their occult, a middle term worked unexplained, abrupt, they were words that spoke to a vast wordless truth, they were figures crowding an unfinished sun. None truly knew himself or knew the world or the reality living there enshrined, only they knew what mind could take and build out of the secret supermind's huge store. A darkness under them, a bright void above, uncertain they lived in a great climbing space, by mysteries they explained a mystery, as he moved in this ether of ambiguous life, himself was soon a riddle to himself, as symbols he saw all and sought their sense dot across the leaping springs of death and birth and over shifting borders of soul change, a hunter on the spirit's creative track. He followed in life's fine and mighty trails pursuing her sealed formidable delight in a perilous adventure. Without close. At first no aim appeared in those large steps, only the wide source he saw of all things here looking towards a wider source beyond. For as she drew away from earthly lines, a tenser drag was felt from the unknown, a higher context of delivering thought drove her towards marvel and discovery, there came a high release from pettier cares, a mightier image of desire and hope, a vaster formula, a greater scene. Ever she circled towards some far-off light, her signs still covered more than they revealed, but tied to some immediate sight and will they lost their purport in the joy of use, till stripped of their infinite meaning they became a cipher gleaming with unreal sense. Armed with a magical and haunted bow she aimed at a target kept invisible and ever deemed remote though always near. As one who spells illumined characters, the keybook of a crabbed magician text, he scanned her subtle tangled weird designs and the screen difficult theorem of her clues, traced in the monstrous sounds of desert time the thread beginnings of her titan works, watched her charade of action for some hint, read the no gestures of her silhouettes, and strove to capture in their burdened drift the dance fantasia of her sequences escaping into rhythmic mystery, a glimmer of fugitive feet on fleeing. Soil. In the labyrinth pattern of her thoughts and hopes and the byways of her intimate desires, in the complex corners crowded with her dreams and rounds crossed by an intrigue of irrelevant rounds, a wanderer straying amid fugitive scenes, he lost its signs and chased each failing guess. Ever he met key words, ignorant of their key. A sun that dazzled its own eye of sight, a luminous enigma's brilliant had lit the dense purple barrier of thought sky, a dim large trance showed to the night her stars. As if sitting near an open window's gap, he read by lightning flash on crowding flash chapters of her metaphysical romance of the soul's search for lost reality and her fictions drawn from spirit's authentic fact, her caprices and conceits and meanings locked, her rash unseizable freaks and mystery turns. The magnificent wrappings of her secrecy that fold her desirable body out of sight, the strange significant forms woven on her robe, her meaningful outlines of the souls of things he saw, her false transparencies of thought hue her rich brocades with imaged fancies sewn and mutable masks and broideries of disguise. A thousand baffling faces of the truth looked at him from her forms with unknown eyes and wordless mouths unrecognizable, in sudden scintillations of the unknown, inexpressive sounds became veridical, ideas that seemed unmeaning flashed out truth, voices that came from unseen waiting worlds uttered the syllables of the unmanifest to clothe the body of the mystic word and wizard diagrams of the occult law sealed some precise unreadable harmony, or used hue and figure to reconstitute the herald. Blazon of time's secret things. In her green wildernesses and lurking depths, in her thickets of joy where danger clasps delight, he glimpsed the hidden wings of her songster hopes, a glimmer of blue and gold and scarlet fire. In her covert lanes, bordering her chance-filled paths and by her singing rivulets and calm lakes he found the glow of her golden fruits of bliss and the beauty of her flowers of dream and muse. As if a miracle of heart's change by joy he watched in the alchemist radiance of her sons the crimson outburst of one secular flower on the tree of sacrifice of spiritual love. In the sleepy splendor of her noons he saw, a perpetual repetition through the hours, Thoughts dance of dragonflies on mystery's stream that skim but never test its murmur's race, and heard the laughter of her rose desires running as if to escape from longed-for hands, jingling sweet anklet bells of fantasy.
Amidst life symbols of her occult power he moved and felt them as close real forms, in that life more concrete than the lives of men throbbed heart, beats of the hidden reality, embodied was there what we but think and feel, self-framed what here takes outward borrowed shapes. A comrade oaf accepted by her mighty loneliness, he stood with her on meditating peaks where life and being are a sacrament offered to the reality beyond, and saw her loose into infinity her hooded eagles of significance, messengers of thought to the unknowable. Identified in soul vision and soul sense, entering into her depths as into a house, all he became that she was or longed to be, he thought with her thoughts and journeyed with her steps, lived with her breath and scanned all with her eyes that so he might learn the secret of her soul. A witness overmastered by his scene, he admired her splendid front of pomp and play and the marvels of her rich and delicate craft, and thrilled to the insistence of her cry, impassioned he bore the sorceries of her might, felt laid on him her abrupt mysterious will, her hands that need fate in their violent grasp, her touch that moves, her powers that seize and drive. But this too he saw, her soul that wept within, her seekings vain that clutch at fleeing truth, her hopes whose sombre gaze mates with despair, the passion that possessed her longing limbs, the trouble and rapture of her yearning breasts, her mind that toils unsatisfied with its fruits, her heart that captures not the one beloved. Always he met a veiled and seeking force, an exiled goddess building mimic heavens, a sphinx whose eyes look up to a hidden Sunday ever he felt near a spirit in her forms, its passive presence was her nature's strength, this soul is real in apparent things, even upon earth the spirit is life's key, but her solid outsides nowhere bear its trace. Its stamp on her axe is undiscoverable. A pathos of lost heights is its appeal. Only sometimes is caught a shadowy line that seems a hint of veiled reality. Life stared at him with vague confused outlines offering a picture the eyes could not keep, a story that was yet not written there. As in a fragmentary half, lost design life's meanings fled from the pursuing eye. Life's visage hides life's real self from sight, life's secret sense is written within, above. The thought that gives its sense lives far beyond, it is not seen in its half-finished design. In vain we hope to read the baffling signs or find the word of the half-played charade. Only in that greater life a cryptic thought is found, is hinted some interpreting word that makes the earth, myth a tale intelligible. Something was seen at last that looked like truth. In a half-lit air of hazardous mystery the eye that looks at the dark half of truth made out an image mid a vivid blur and peering through a mist of subtle tints he saw a half-blind chained divinity bewildered by the world in which he moved, yet conscious of some light prompting his soul. Attracted to strange far-off shimmerings, led by the fluting of a distant player he sought his way amid life's laughter and call and the index chaos of her myriad steps towards some total deep infinitude. Around crowded the forest of her signs, at hazard he read by arrow leaps of thought that hit the mark by guess or luminous chance, her changing coloured road lights of idea and her signals of uncertain swift event, the hieroglyphs of her symbol pageantries and her landmarks in the tangled paths of time. In her mazes of approach and of retreat to every side she draws him and repels, but drawn too near escapes from his embrace, always she leads him but no way is sure. Allured by the menetoned marvel of her chant, attracted by the witchcraft of her moods and moved by her casual touch to joy and grief, he loses himself in her but wins her not. A fugitive paradise smiles at him from her eyes, he dreams of her beauty made forever his, he dreams of his mastery her limbs shall bear, he dreams of the magic of her breasts of bliss. In her illumined script, her fanciful translation of God's pure original text, he thinks to read the scripture wonderful, hieratic key to unknown beatitudes. But the word of life is hidden in its script, the chant of life has lost its divine note. Unseen, a captive in a house of sound, the spirit lost in the splendor of a dream listens to a thousand-voiced illusions ode. A delicate weft of sorcery steals the heart or a fiery magic tints her tones and hues, yet they but wake a thrill of transient grace, a vagrant march struck by the wanderer time, they call to a brief unsatisfied delight or wallow in ravishments of mind and sense, but miss the luminous answer of the soul. A blind heartthrob that reaches joy through tears, a yearning towards peaks forever unreached, 
an ecstasy of unfulfilled desire into an old sadness's sweet escaping trail, turned her tears to gems of diamond pain, her sorrow into a magic crown of song. Brief are her snatches of felicity that touch the surface, then escape or die, a lost remembrance echoes in her depths, a deathless longing is hers, a veiled self's call, a prisoner in the mortal's limiting world, a spirit wounded by life sobs in her breast, a cherished suffering is her deepest cry. A wanderer on forlorn despairing roots, along the roads of sound a frustrate voice forsaken cries to a forgotten bliss. Astray in the echo caverns of desire, it guards the phantoms of a soul's dead hopes and keeps alive the voice of perished things or lingers upon sweet and errant notes hunting for pleasure in the heart of pain. A fateful hand has touched the cosmic chords and the intrusion of a troubled strain covers the inner music's hidden key that guides unheard the surface cadences. Yet is it joy to live and to create and joy to love and labor though all fails, and joy to seek though all we find deceives and all on which we lean betrays our trust, yet something in its depths was worth the pain, a passionate memory haunts with ecstasy's fire. Even grief has joy hidden beneath its roots, for nothing is truly vain the one has made, in our defeated hearts God's strength survives and victory's star still lights our desperate road, our death is made a passage to new worlds. This to life's music gives its anthem swell. To all she lends the glory of her voice, earth's transient yearnings cry from her lips and fade. Alone the God given him escapes her art that came with her from her spiritual home but stopped halfway and failed, a silent word awake in some deep pause of waiting worlds, a murmur suspended in eternity's hush, but no breath comes from the supernal peace, a sumptuous interlude occupies the ear and the heart listens and the soul consents, an evanescent music it repeats wasting on transient time's eternity. A tremolo of the voices of the hours oblivious screens the high intended theme the self-embodying spirit came to play on the vast clavichord of nature force. Only a mighty murmur here and there of the eternal word, the blissful voice or beauty's touch transfiguring heart and sense, a wandering splendor and a mystic cry, recalls the strength and sweetness heard no more. Here is the gap, here stops or sinks life's force, this deficit paupers the magician's skill, this want makes all the rest seem thin and bare. A half-sight draws the horizon of her acts, her depths remember what she came to do but the mind has forgotten all the heart mistakes, in nature's endless lines is lost the God. In knowledge to sum up omniscience, in action to erect the omnipotent, to create her creator here was her heart's conceit, to invade the cosmic scene with utter God. Toiling to transform the still far absolute into an all-fulfilling epiphany, into an utterance of the ineffable, she would bring the glory here of the absolute's force, change poise into creation's rhythmic swing, marry with a sky of karma sea of bliss. A fire to call eternity into time, make body's joy as vivid as the soul's, earth she would lift to neighborhood with heaven, labor's life to equate with the supreme and reconcile the eternal and the abyss. Her pragmatism of the transcendent truth fills silence with the voices of the gods, but in the cry the single voice is lost. For nature's vision climbs beyond her acts. A life of gods in heaven she sees above, a demigod emerging from an ape is all she can in our mortal element. Here the half-god, the half-titan are her peak, this greater life wavers twixt earth and sky. A poignant paradox pursues her dreams, her hooded energy moves an ignorant world to look for a joy her own strong clasp puts off, in her embrace it cannot turn to its source. Immense her power, endless her acts vast drive, astray is its significance and lost. Although she carries in her secret breast the law and journeying curve of all things born her knowledge partial seems, her purpose small, on a soil of yearning tread her sumptuous hours. A leaden nescience weighs the wings of thought, her power oppresses the being with its garbs, her actions prison its immortal gaze. A sense of limit haunts her masteries and nowhere is assured content or peace, for all the depth and beauty of her work a wisdom lacks that sets the spirit free. An old and faded charm had now her face and pulled for him her quick and curious lore, his wide soul asked a deeper joy than hers. Out of her deedal lines he sought escape, but neither gate of horn nor ivory he found nor postern of spiritual sight, there was no issue from that dreamlike space. 
Our being must move eternally through time, death helps us not, vain is the hope to cease, a secret will compels us to endure. Our life's repose is in the infinite, it cannot end, its end is life supreme. Death is a passage, not the goal of our walk, some ancient deep impulsion labours on, our souls are dragged as with a hidden leash, carried from birth to birth, from world to world, our acts prolong after the bodies fall the old perpetual journey without pause. No silent peak is found where time can rest. This was a magic stream that reached no sea. However far he went, wherever turned, the wheel of works ran with him and outstripped, always a farther task was left to do. A beat of action and a cry of search forever grew in that unquiet world, a busy murmur filled the heart of time. All was contrivance and unceasing stir. A hundred ways to live were tried in vain, a sameness that assumed a thousand forms strove to escape from its long monotone and made new things that soon were like the old. A curious decoration lured the eye and novel values furbished ancient themes to cheat the mind with the idea of change. A different picture that was still the same appeared upon the cosmic vague background. Only another labyrinthine house of creatures and their doings and events, a city of the traffic over market of creation and her wares, was offered to the laboring mind and heart. A circuit ending where it first began is dubbed the forward and eternal march of progress on perfection's unknown road. Each final scheme leads to a sequel plan. Yet every new departure seems the last, inspired evangel, theory's ultimate peak, proclaiming a panacea for all time's ills or carrying thought in its ultimate zenith flight and trumpeting supreme discovery, each brief idea, a structure perishable, publishes the immortality of its rule, its claim to be the perfect form of things, truth's last epitome, time's golden best. But nothing has been achieved of infinite worth, a world made ever anew, never complete, piled always half attempts on lost attempts and saw a fragment as the eternal whole. In the aimless mounting total of things done existence seemed a vain necessity's act, a wrestle of eternal opposites in a clasped antagonism's close-locked embrace, a play without denouement or idea, a hunger march of lives without a goal, or, written on a bare blackboard of space, a futile and recurring sum of souls, a hope that failed, a light that never shone, the labor of an unaccomplished force tied to its axe in a dim eternity. There is no end or none can yet be seen, although defeated, life must struggle on, always she sees a crown she cannot grasp, her eyes are fixed beyond her fallen state. There quivers still within her breast an hours a glory that was once and is no more, or there calls to us from some unfulfilled beyond a greatness yet unreached by the halting world. In a memory behind our mortal sense a dream persists of larger happier air breathing around free hearts of joy and love, forgotten by us, immortal in lost time. A ghost of bliss pursues her haunted depths, for she remembers still, though now so far, her realm of golden ease and glad desire and the beauty and strength and happiness that were hers in the sweetness of her glowing paradise, in her kingdom of immortal ecstasy halfway between God's silence and the abyss. This knowledge in our hidden parts we keep, awake to a vague mystery's appeal, we meet a deep unseen reality far truer than the world's face of present truth, we are chased by a self we cannot now recall and moved by a spirit we must still become. As one who has lost the kingdom of his soul, we look back to some god phase of our birth other than this imperfect creature here and hope in this or a diviner world to recover yet from heaven's patient guard what by our mind's forgetfulness we miss, our being's natural felicity, our heart's delight we have exchanged for grief, the body's thrill we bartered for mere pain, the bliss for which our mortal nature yearns as yearns an obscure moth to blazing light. Our life is a march to a victory never won. This wave of being longing for delight, this eager turmoil of unsatisfied strengths, these long far files of forward striving hopes lift worshipping eyes to the blue void called heaven looking for the golden hand that never came, the advent for which all creation waits, the beautiful visage of eternity that shall appear upon the roads of time. Yet still to ourselves we say rekindling faith, oh, surely one day he shall come to our cry, one day he shall create our life anew and utter the magic formula of peace and bring perfection to the scheme of things. One day he shall descend to life and earth, 
leaving the secrecy of the eternal doors, into a world that cries to him for help, and bring the truth that sets the spirit free, the joy that is the baptism of the soul, the strength that is the outstretched arm of love. One day he shall lift his beauty's dreadful veil, impose delight on the world's beating heart and bear his secret body of light and bliss, but now we strain to reach an unknown goal, there is no end of seeking and of birth, there is no end of dying and return, the life that wins its aim asks greater aims, the life that fails and dies must live again, till it has found itself it cannot cease. All must be done for which life and death were made. But who shall say that even then is rest? Or their repose and action are the same in the deep breast of God's supreme delight. In a high state where ignorance is no more, each movement is a wave of peace and bliss, repose God's motionless creative force, action a ripple in the infinite and birth a gesture of eternity. A sun of transfiguration still can shine and night can bear its core of mystic light, the self-cancelling, self-afflicting paradox into a self-luminous mystery might change, the imbroglio into a joyful miracle. Then God could be visible here, here take a shape, disclosed would be the spirit's identity, life would reveal her true immortal face. But now a termless labor is her fate, in its recurrent decimal of events birth, death are a ceaseless iteration's points, the old question mark margins each finished page, each volume of her effort's history. A limping yes through the Ian's journey still accompanied by an eternal no, all seems in vain, yet endless is the gain. Impassive turns the ever-circling wheel, life has no issue, death brings no release. A prisoner of itself the being lives and keeps its futile immortality, extinction is denied, its sole escape. An error of the gods has made the world. Or indifferent the eternal watches time. Canto 7. The descent into night. A mind absolved from life, made calm to know, a heart divorced from the blindness and the pang, the seal of tears, the bond of ignorance, he turned to find that wide world failure's cause. Away he looked from nature's visible face and sent his gaze into the viewless vast, the formidable unknown infinity, asleep behind the endless coil of things, that carries the universe in its timeless breaths and the ripples of its being are our lives. The worlds are built by its unconscious breath and matter and mind are its figures or its powers, our waking thoughts the output of its dreams. The veil was rent that covers nature's depths, he saw the fount of the world's lasting pain and the mouth of the black pit of ignorance, the evil guarded at the roots of life raised up its head and looked into his eyes. On a dim bank where dies subjective space, from a stark ridge overlooking all that is, a tenebrous awakened nescience, her wide blank eyes wandering at time and form, stared at the inventions of the living void and the abyss whence our beginnings rose. Behind appeared a grey carved mask of night watching the birth of all created things. A hidden puissance conscious of its force, a vague and lurking presence everywhere, a contrary doom that threatens all things made, a death figuring as the dark seed of life seemed to engender and to slay the world. Then from the sombre mystery of the gulfs and from the hollow bosom of the mask something crept forth that seemed a shapeless thought. A fatal influence upon creatures stole whose lethal touch pursued the immortal spirit, on life was laid the haunting finger of death and overcast with error, grief and pain the soul's native will for truth and joy and light. A deformation coiled that claimed to be the being's very turn, nature's true drive. A hostile and perverting mind at work in every corner ensconced of conscious life corrupted truth with her own formulas, interceptor of the listening of the soul, afflicting knowledge with the hue of doubt it captured the oracles of the occult gods, effaced the signposts of life's pilgrimage, cancelled the firm rock edicts graved by time, and on the foundations of the cosmic law erected its bronze pylons of misrule. Even light and love by that cloak danger's spell turned from the brilliant nature of the gods to fallen angels and misleading sons, became themselves a danger and a charm, a perverse sweetness, heaven-born malefice, its power could deform divinest things. A wind of sorrow breathed upon the world, all thought with fossid was besieged, all act stamped with defect or with frustration sign, all high attempt with failure or vain success, but none could know the reason of his fall. The grey mask whispered and, though no sound was heard, 
yet in the ignorant heart a seed was sown that bore black fruit of suffering, death and bale. Out of the chill steps of a bleak unseen invisible, wearing the night's grey mask, arrived the shadowy dreadful messengers, invaders from a dangerous world of power, ambassadors of evil's absolute. In silence the inaudible voices spoke, hands that none saw planted the fatal grain, no form was seen, yet a dire work was done, an iron decree in crooked uncials written imposed a law of sin and adverse fate. Life looked at him with changed and somber eyes, her beauty he saw and the yearning heart in things that with a little happiness is content, answering to a small ray of truth or love, he saw her gold sunlight and her far blue sky, her green of leaves and hue and scent of flowers and the charm of children and the love of friends and the beauty of women and kindly hearts of men, but saw too the dreadful powers that drive her moods and the anguish she has strewn upon her ways, fate waiting on the unseen steps of men and her evil and sorrow and last gift of death. A breath of disillusion and decadence corrupting watched for life's maturity and made to rot the full grain of the soul, progress became a purveyor of death. A world that clung to the law of a slain light cherished the putrid corpses of dead truths, hailed twisted forms as things free, new and true, beauty from ugliness and evil drank feeling themselves guests at a banquet of the gods and tasted corruption like a high-spiced food. A darkness settled on the heavy air, it hunted the bright smile from nature's lips and slew the native confidence in her heart and put fear's crooked look into her eyes. The lust that warps the spirit's natural good replaced by a manufactured virtue and vice the frank spontaneous impulse of the soul, afflicting nature with the jewel's lie, their twin values whetted a forbidden zest, made evil a relief from spurious good, the ego battened on righteousness and sin and each became an instrument of hell. In rejected heaps by a monotonous road the old simple delights were left to lie on the wasteland of life's descent to night. All glory of life was dimmed, tarnished with doubt, all beauty ended in an aging face, all power was dubbed a tyranny cursed by God and truth a fiction needed by the mind, the chase of joy was now a tired hunt, all knowledge was left a questioning ignorance. As from a womb obscure he saw emerge the body and visage of a dark unseen hidden behind the fair outsides of life. Its dangerous commerce is our suffering's cause. Its breath is a subtle poison in men's hearts, all evil starts from that ambiguous face. A peril haunted now the common air, the world grew full of menacing energies, and wherever turned for help or hope his eyes, in field and house, in street and camp and mart he met the prowl and stealthy come and go of armed disquieting bodied influences. A march of goddess figures dark and nude alarmed the air with grandiose unease, appalling footsteps drew invisibly near, shapes that were threats invaded the dreamlight, and ominous beings passed him on the road whose very gaze was a calamity, a charm and sweetness sudden and formidable, faces that raised alluring lips and eyes approached him armed with beauty like a snare, but hid a fatal meaning in each line and could in a moment dangerously change. But he alone discerned that screened attack. A veil upon the inner vision lay, a force was there that hid its dreadful steps, all was belied, yet thought itself the truth. All were beset but knew not of the siege, for none could see the authors of their fall. Aware of some dark wisdom still withheld that was the seal and warrant of this strength, he followed the track of dim tremendous steps returning to the night from which they came. A tract he reached unbuilt and owned by none, there all could enter but none stay for long. It was a no man's land of evil air, a crowded neighborhood without one home, a borderland between the world and hell. Their unreality was nature's lord, it was a space where nothing could be true, for nothing was what it had claimed to be, a high appearance wrapped a specious void. Yet nothing would confess its own pretense even to itself in the ambiguous heart, a vast deception was the law of things, only by that deception they could live. An unsubstantial Nile guaranteed the fossid of the forms this nature took and made them seem a while to be and live. A borrowed magic drew them from the void, they took a shape and stuff that was not theirs and showed a color that they could not keep, mirrors to a phantasm of reality. Each rainbow brilliance was a splendid lie, a beauty unreal graced a glamour face. Nothing could be relied on to remain, joy nurtured tears and good and evil proved, 
but never out of evil one plucked good, love ended early in hate, delight killed with pain, truth into falsity grew and death ruled life. A power that laughed at the mischiefs of the world, an irony that joined the world's contraries and flung them into each other's arms to strive, put a sardonic rictus on God's face. Aloof, its influence entered everywhere and left a cloven hoofmark on the breast, a twisted heart and a strange somber smile mocked at the sinister comedy of life. Announcing the advent of a perilous form and ominous tread softened its dire footfall that none might understand or be on guard, none heard until a dreadful grasp was close. Or else all augured a divine approach, an air of prophecy felt, a heavenly hope, listened for a gospel, watched for a new star. The fiend was visible but cloaked in light, he seemed a helping angel from the skies, he armed untruth with scripture and the law, he deceived with wisdom, with virtue slew the soul and led to perdition by the heavenward path. A lavish sense he gave of power and joy, and, when arose the warning from within, he reassured the ear with dulcet tones or took the mind captive in its own net, his rigorous logic made the false seem true. Amazing the elect with holy law he spoke as with the very voice of God. The air was full of treachery and ruse, truth-speaking was a stratagem in that place, ambush lurked in a smile and peril made safety its cover, trust its entry's gate, Fossard came laughing with the eyes of truth, each friend might turn an enemy or spy, the hand one clasped ensleeved a dagger's stab and an embrace could be doom's iron cage. Agony and danger stalked their trembling prey and softly spoke as to a timid friend, attack sprang suddenly vehement and unseen, fear leaped upon the heart at every turn and cried out with an anguished dreadful voice, it called for one to save but none came near. All warily walked, for death was ever close, yet caution seemed a vain expense of care, for all that guarded proved a deadly net, and when after long suspense salvation came and brought a glad relief disarming strength, it served as a smiling passage to worse fate. There was no truce and no safe place to rest, one dared not slumber or put off one's arms, it was a world of battle and surprise. All who were there lived for themselves alone, all warred against all, but with a common hate turned on the mind that sought some higher good, truth was exiled lest she should dare to speak and hurt the heart of darkness with her light or bring her pride of knowledge to blaspheme the settled anarchy of established things. Then the scene changed, but kept its dreadful core, altering its form the life remained the same. A capital was there without a state, it had no ruler, only groups that strove. He saw a city of ancient ignorance founded upon a soil that knew not light. There each in his own darkness walked alone, only they agreed to differ in evil's paths, to live in their own way for their own selves or to enforce a common lie and wrong their ego was lord upon his peacock seat and Fossard sat by him, his mate and queen, the world turned to them as heaven to truth and God. Injustice justified by firm decrees the sovereign weights of error's legalized trade, but all the weights were false and none the same, ever she watched with her balance and a sword, lest any sacrilegious word expose the sanctified formulas of her old misrule. In high professions wrapped self all walked wide and licensed stalked prating of order and right, there was no altar raised to liberty. True freedom was abhorred and hunted down, harmony and tolerance nowhere could be seen, each group proclaimed its dire and naked law. A frame of ethics knobbed with scriptural rules or a theory passionately believed and praised a table seemed of high heaven's sacred code. A formal practice mailed and iron shod gave to a rude and ruthless warrior kind drawn from the savage bowels of the earth a proud stern poise of harsh nobility, a civic posture rigid and formidable. But all their private acts belied the pose, power and utility were their truth and right, an eagle rapacity clawed its coveted good, beaks pecked and talons tore all weaker prey. In their sweet secrecy of pleasant sins nature they obeyed and not a moralist god. Inconscient traders in bundles of contraries, they did what in others they would persecute, when their eyes looked upon their fellow's vice, an indignation flamed, a virtuous wrath, oblivious of their own deep, hid offence, mob-like they stoned a neighbour caught in sin. A pragmatist judge within past false decrees, posed worst iniquities on equity's base, reasoned ill actions just, 
sanctioned the scale of the merchant ego's interest and desire. Thus was a balance kept, the world could live. A zealot fervor pushed their ruthless cults, all faith not theirs bled scourged as heresy, they questioned, captived, tortured, burned or smote and forced the soul to abandon right or die. Amid her clashing creeds and warring sects religions sat upon a blood-stained throne. A hundred tyrannies oppressed and slew and founded unity upon fraud and force. Only what seemed was prized as real there, the ideal was a cynic ridicules but, hooted by the crowd, mocked by enlightened wits, spiritual-seeking wandered outcast, a dreamer's self-deceiving web of thought or mad chimera deemed or hypocrites fake, its passionate instinct trailed through minds obscure lost in the circuits of the ignorance. A lie was there the truth and truth a lie. Here must the traveller of the upward way, for daring hell's kingdom's winds the heavenly route, pause or pass slowly through that perilous space, a prayer upon his lips and the great name. If probed not all discernment's keen spear point, he might stumble into falsity's endless net. Over his shoulder often he must look back like one who feels on his neck an enemy's breath, else stealing up behind a treasonous blow might prostrate cast and pin to unholy soil, pierced through his back by evil's poignant stake. So might one fall on the Eternal's road forfeiting the spirit's lonely chance in time and no news of him his name the index of a failing hope, the position of a dead remembered star. Only were safe who kept God in their hearts, courage their armour, faith their sword, they must walk, the hand ready to smite, the eye to scout, casting a javelin regard in front, heroes and soldiers of the army of light. Hardly even so, the grisly danger passed, released into a calmer purer air, they dared at length to breathe and smile once more. Once more they moved beneath a real Sunday though hell claimed rule, the spirit still had power. This no, man's land he passed without debate, him the heights missioned, him the abyss desired, none stood across his way, no voice forbade. For swift and easy is the downward path, and now towards the night was turned his face. A greater darkness waited, a worse reign, if worse can be where all is evil's extreme, yet to the cloak the uncloaked is naked worst. Their God and truth and the supernal light had never been or else had power no more. As when one slips in a deep moment's trance over mind's border into another world, he crossed a boundary whose stealthy trace I could not see but only the soul feel. Into an armoured fierce domain he came and saw himself wandering like a lost soul amid grimed walls and savage slums of night. Around him crowded grey and squalid huts neighbouring proud palaces of perverted power, in human quarters and demoniac wards. A pride in evil hugged its wretchedness, a misery haunting splendour pressed those fell dun suburbs of the cities of dream life. Their life displayed to the spectator soul the shadow depths of her strange miracle. A strong and fallen goddess without hope, obscured, deformed by some dire gorgon spell, as might a harlot empress in a bouge, nude, unashamed, exulting she upraised her evil face of perilous beauty and charm and, drawing panic to a shuddering kiss twixt the magnificence of her fatal breasts, allured to their abyss the spirit's fall. Across his field of sight she multiplied as on a scenic film or moving plate the implacable splendour of her nightmare pomps. On the dark background of a soulless world she staged between a lurid light and shade her dramas of the sorrow of the depths written on the agonised nerves of living things, epics of horror and grim majesty, wry statues spat and stiffened in life's mud, a glut of hideous forms and hideous deeds paralysed pity in the hardened breast. 